Joining us now is David Zervos from Jeffries and Richard Bernstein from Richard Bernstein Advisors. Good afternoon to you both. Richard, I'll start with you. What banking crisis? Just looking at the major averages and the fact that we dipped a little bit and then came right back to start the year so strong. Your thoughts? So, Morgan, uh, good afternoon. I think, you know, you kind of actually answered what I was going to say in the question in that people are saying what banking crisis, that they're assuming that we are going to go back and enter a period of cheap and abundant liquidity because of the financial crisis or partly because of the financial crisis. That's giving rise to this very speculative run that you're seeing in the stock market. So I think, you know, the way you said, like, what banking crisis? Exactly. That's what people are thinking. But they are thinking that the Fed and the FDIC and the Treasury are going to provide tons of liquidity and they're going to speculate on all that liquidity. David, do you see it the same way? I mean, we have seen hundreds of billions of dollars added to the balance sheet. And yes, we can debate the reasons for it and how temporary it's going to be. But it does inject liquidity, liquidity into a market that's been starved for it. Yeah, Morgan, it, it, it's there. It's, uh, it's good news, though, that yesterday when the H41 report came out, that the balance sheet was contracting again. So mm -hmm. we had the big, the big run up. We had the introduction of the, the new funding facility, the changes in the discount window operation to make it much more attractive for bank, banks to bring assets there. And then obviously all the assets of the two bank failures went onto the Fed's balance sheet, or at least one of them did. So we had a three to $400 billion expansion. And then that's come down on, on Thursday. I think we had a $30 billion contraction last week. So um, it does look short-lived. It looks like these are two very specific, very unusual cases of mismanagement and bad regulation combining to give us uh, something of a scare. But the broader financial markets and the broader financial system still look pretty robust. I mean, I, I don't see why we extrapolate this bad behavior to the entire marketplace. And uh, that's been our position since the Sunday night uh, when the Fed first came out with these programs after the original SIBB failure. So, so David, then, do you see this rally having legs? Is this potentially the start of a new bull market, as some folks have uh suggested at least where the NASDAQ is concerned, given the big rally we've seen in tech stocks? I don't. And the reason I don't is that I think that the more the market rallies up, and I've said this this year, and it was even part of our thesis last year, the more the market rallies up, the more the market has confidence, the more that Jay Powell and his, his friends around the board table at 20th and Constitution are going to feel emboldened to be able to get inflation back to 2% faster. And I think the more we see this 42, 4,300 S&P, the more it's going to feel like Jackson Hole last year when Jay sort of changed the speech all around at the last minute and said, hey, guys, if you're that optimistic, that means I can just go a little harder and a little faster. Now, he's further down the road, and I don't think he needs to go that much further, but I think it just gives the Fed that much more reason to stay on the more aggressive side hmm. of the monetary tightening equation. Rich, the fact that we have seen tech stocks, communication services, consumer discretionary uh, really the big outperformers to start these first three months of the year. It's, the, the dynamic has changed to this idea that the mega caps are now defensive, but the actual more traditionally defensive sectors have been the underperformers. Is, is that where you find opportunities to buy here, or do you continue to work off of the momentum trade? Absolutely, Morgan. I think the... Um you know, I, I love Mike Santilli. I've known him for a million years. But I think he made a comment in the last segment that was that was really wrong. He said, there's no macro call to be made here. It's all company specific. I would argue it's the exact opposite. This is a giant macro call based on a speculative fervor of returning to cheap and abundant liquidity. Remember, it's not only tech, it's cryptocurrencies. And there is nothing fundamental about the cryptocurrency market. So if you think that this could end in disappointment, which is kind of my feeling, then it says that you want to revert back towards the more defensive sectors, things like consumer staples, things like healthcare, things like utilities, that ultimately earnings and fundamentals do matter. And that's what's probably going to drive the market more than a hope of a return to cheap and abundant liquidity.